Saturday's game against Georgia proved a few things about this UF team and the program. Some of it is good. Some of it not so good. But despite getting blown out by our biggest rival, I am not jumping off the cliff just yet. So let's get into it. The Florida Gators came out and they punched Georgia in the mouth. They drove the length of the field and they scored on their very first possession. And honestly, guys, I found myself thinking, okay, if we're going to win, this is how we're going to get it done. I found myself hopeful once again when the Gator defense held the dogs to three points on their opening drive. I was sitting there thinking, okay, that's huge. This is a recipe for success. This is how you find a win in Jacksonville. But that's about where my optimism ran out. The rest of the game, the Gators honestly were just outplayed and outcoached. Last year's team hung around for longer, which I find very interesting because I consider this year's UF team an improvement on last year's. And I similarly believe that Georgia is just not as good as they were last year. I think this year's Georgia team loses to last year's Georgia team on a neutral field. I know that Gator fans are upset with the outcome. And trust me, I also want to win every single game. But I don't know that it's shocking that Florida lost the hardest game on their schedule. Georgia is the number one team in the country. They are two-time reigning national champion. And this Gator team isn't there yet. So I don't know that I think yesterday should make you feel any different about this team than you did on Friday. So this is why recruiting is so important. Exactly what you saw on the field on Saturday summarizes why so many people wanted Dan Mullen fired and they wanted a coach who specialized in recruiting to be hired. Georgia was bigger, stronger, faster at essentially every single position, but and most importantly, in the trenches. It all starts in the trenches. UF's offense and defensive lines were god awful. Florida was already ranked 100th out of all FBS teams in sacks allowed. The rankings haven't updated just yet, but I can't imagine that all the sacks they allowed yesterday is going to help that ranking. Our defensive line then gave Carson Beck all day to throw the football, and they just looked slow. We're going to talk a little bit more about that defense in a minute. But first, I really want to talk about something that I think was glaringly obvious in this game. Billy Napier cannot continue to be the Gator play caller after this season. If there was ever a game that was a nail in Billy Napier's play calling coffin, or at least should be, this was it. Okay? I, I just... The reverse play, uh, once UF crossed midfield, they had been moving the ball at will. It was just a stupid call. This put them behind the sticks, and they ended up having to punt instead of taking a two-score lead. I don't understand. You're moving the ball. You're doing exactly what you want to do to your opponent. Why complicate things? Why get cute? It, doesn't, it does not make sense to me. And let's talk for a minute about his horrific fourth down play call. The Gators needed two feet. Two feet. Most teams, most teams would call a quarterback sneak or a run up the middle here. High percentage success rate plays, even though pretty much everybody knows exactly what's coming. Billy tells us he's a statistics guy, right? He likes to look at the numbers to determine how he calls plays. I don't understand. Is that how he called this play? No, no way. Nope. He decided that the best play was a snap between his quarterback's legs to his left-handed running back for a pass. Listen, I understand that Billy Napier has no confidence in his offensive line. I don't have any confidence in our offensive line either, but this was an unnecessarily complicated play with a low percentage of of success. And I know I saw some of you guys on Twitter saying, hey, if it had worked, you guys would be calling him a genius. Eh, no. If it had worked, we'd been saying, what a dumb play call. Good thing it didn't bite him in the ass. 
But here we are. It didn't work. It ended momentum. Florida was moving the football. It wasn't a good call. Napier needs to focus on getting the ball to his best players as quickly as possible. His best players are Trey Wilson, Ricky Pearsaw, Trevor Etienne, and Montrell Johnson. Get him the football as much as you can. Florida's offensive line isn't getting any better this season. So Napier is going to have to get creative. And there's a difference between getting creative and getting unnecessarily complicated. And I think that's the problem with that fourth down play. It was unnecessarily complicated. Get the ball into the hands of your playmakers, period. End of story. That's it. Don't do anything cute. Don't do anything crazy. Get them the ball. I loved how UF was playing prior to this. And honestly, I feel like the game absolutely changed at this moment. I was pretty upset when that fourth down call happened. I just... It didn't make sense to me. I didn't like it. It killed momentum. What were you guys thinking? Let me know in the comments. And listen, do me a favor. Keep it PG or at the very least PG-13, please. Some kids read these, uh, these comments. It was a bad play call. It killed momentum. I don't know that Florida wins this game, even if that doesn't happen, right? They probably don't. But they shot themselves in the foot unnecessarily. Those things have to change if this team is going to win some of these games down the stretch. Let's talk a little bit about defense. Okay, so a line I have said so many times in videos on this channel is that progress isn't linear. And honestly, nowhere is that more apparent than on Florida's defense. A lot of times it does look like two steps forward, one step back. While the defense does need to get better and in a hurry, I think some of the criticism is actually aimed in the wrong direction. I understand that our DBs have made mistakes. And listen, they deserve some criticism. I I found myself on Saturday shouting, you know, some not nice things at some of these guys on my TV because of, uh, you know, blown coverages or uh, getting burned, things like that. But I've been preaching this for weeks. It all starts with the defensive line. The defensive line is the start of all of Florida's defensive problems. When you don't bring any pressure, it makes it hard for any of the guys lined up behind you to do their job successfully. The Gators only had four tackles for a loss on Saturday. Getting zero pressure and no push up the middle means that you are asking your DBs to cover for far too long. We know that Florida's DBs have to improve. We have the option currently of true freshmen or guys left over from the Mullen era, essentially. So uh, guys that still need to get developed and guys that maybe wouldn't have been recruited here had Napier been the head coach. Those are the options. You're not helping them out when you are making them cover their man, who, by the way, are five-star receivers because Georgia's got them aplenty everywhere. No wonder they fail at their job. You are asking them to do it for far too long because you're not getting pressure and push. It all starts in the trenches. So we can all curse out our DBs getting burned until we are blue in the face. And like I said, that needs to improve also. But until Florida's defensive line can bring pressure and push up the middle, the defense just isn't going to get any better. All right, time for my weekly rant about special teams moment. Florida needs a special teams coach. I've been beating this drum since the Utah game. Well, they have improved in some areas. Hey, at least we have a kicker. Trey Smack is fantastic. They have stayed almost defiantly the same in other areas. And honestly, I'm even more concerned after... Eric, my husband, for those of you that are new to this channel, uh, made me watch a mid-game film session. Uh, He sat there and broke down Florida's blocked punt. The lack of technique on that play, which, by the way, was not Crosshaw's fault at all. He got the ball off very fast. But sitting there and watching this makes me believe even more that time is just not being dedicated to special teams like it should be. Most guys were not blocking who they should have been blocking. And multiple people came through completely untouched. But when you break it down and you look player by player, mostly that's due to poor technique. Feet in the wrong spot. 
body pointed the wrong direction, stance, not what it should be. All of this is coaching. And it honestly makes me think that special teams is an afterthought for this program at the moment. And it can't be because you know what happens? You give up block punts to Georgia. Urban Meyer's favorite statement used to be block a punt, win the game. And, you know, while I don't know that Georgia not blocking this punt changes the outcome of this game at all, it sure as heck added on to the momentum for him. For Florida to win this game against Georgia, they were going to have to play nearly perfect. And obviously, they didn't do that. But I think Billy Napier really cost them a chance to compete with some of his play calls. Coach Napier is great at a lot of things, but not play calling, not in game, at least not when he's wearing, you know, 87 other hats. It's really astounding. Uh, We've talked about this on the show, and I know there's some other Gator writers that have talked about it as well. It's really astounding to see the difference between his weekly first drives, which, you know, are scripted prior to the game, right? And then what he calls on the fly. This is not where he shines. He is an excellent recruiter. He is an excellent CEO, and he is a great talent evaluator. He's not a great play caller. Again, at least not while wearing all the other hats. His success at UF will be largely determined by a long, hard look in the mirror this offseason and hopefully the hiring of an offensive coordinator. But I don't want to be all doom and gloom, guys. There are some positives. I saw some positives in this game. First and foremost, UF did not quit. This team had fight in them for 60 minutes. They were. Georgia's the bigger, stronger, faster team right? It would be easy to quit when you are outmanned. This team did not do that. Coach Napier's team gives him everything they have. And I really think that's a very positive sign of a healthy locker room culture. Rome wasn't built in a day. Napier knows that. Napier's told us that since the first press conference when he was announced the head coach at the University of Florida. This is going to take time. But I honestly think that he has successfully gotten his team to buy into that as well. That's another great sign. This team loves this coaching staff. This team does not quit. This team is filled with fight. All of those things are incredibly positive for the future. You could see it on Saturday. They played their hearts out the entire time. And I love to see that. Another thing that I think uh, is important to note that, and that's at the start of this season, we went five and two, and that was so important for this reason, right? We knew we were going to run into the buzzsaw. That's Georgia. We still have LSU down the pipe. We still have Missouri, who's playing great football at the moment, ranked number 16. We still have Florida State. There's a lot of hard games on the back half of the schedule. UF needed to play well at the beginning of the season to have a chance to be bowl eligible. And now sitting at five and three, they only need to snag one more to be bowl eligible. And that comes with 15 extra practices. That's huge. You've got four ranked teams in your last five games. Obviously, Georgia was the first of that. So if you beat Arkansas next week, you're bowl eligible. Arkansas probably is your best chance to get that win. I'm not saying that we're going to lose to Missouri, LSU, and Florida State, but if you can't beat that Razorback team next week at home, I have a very hard time seeing them beat any of the remaining three, particularly because two of them are in difficult places to play. Guys, listen, patience is important. Progress isn't linear. I'm going to say that till I'm blue in the face on this channel. Progress isn't linear. This team is getting better. They just lost to the number one team in the country. Everybody knew this was coming. Florida was going to have to play the perfect game to win, and they then they were going to probably have to get some help from Georgia, or at least not get screwed by the refs. But the odds of that happening were slim. Your outlook on this team and on Coach Napier shouldn't look any different after this game. Billy Napier is recruiting well. Help is on the way. He currently has the number three recruiting class in the country, and he's not losing players. He's adding players to that class. Keep recruiting. Keep recruiting. Go out. Get the top guys. 
bring them in. He needs time to build this program the way that he wants it. And if you are a fan who wanted Mullen gone and believed that the problem was so dire that an entire rebuild was necessary, stripped down to the studs, build it back up, then you shouldn't be surprised that time is what it takes to get there. Okay, so if you want to rebuild, let it happen. This is a massive week for for UF. One thing Napier has done, and I think done really well this season, is not let one loss turn into another. Already talked about in this video, but there is no quit in this team and in this program. And I think that says a lot about the culture. But they are going to have to rebound from this one quickly. Arkansas has now become the most important game on the schedule. Philly isn't on the hot seat either way, right? But not making a bowl game in year two is not a great look, especially when Arkansas is going to come in as an underdog and the game is in the swamp. Rebound, move forward. Let's go get a win on Saturday. Thanks guys for tuning in. I appreciate all your support. Go Gators and to hell with Georgia.